So what exactly is causing infertility in case of adenomyosis? So what happens in adenomyosis? Sometimes the endometrium and the myometrium distinction is lost. So the differentiation between the endometrial layer and the myometrium layer is lost because there is invasion of this endometrial tissue into the myometrium which in turn affects the thickness of the endometrium. So thickness is of the endometrium is one thing which is very important for implantation. Normally the endometrium should reach a thickness of 7 to 8 mm minimally for implantation to happen. But we see in patients with adenomyosis where they have thin endometrium, the endometrium may not grow beyond 6 mm. In such cases there might be an implantation failure because the bed which is required for the embryo to come and sit is not proper. The other thing which we see is altered myometrial contractions. Suppose when the embryo comes and sits in the uterus, because of this alteration or disturbance which has happened in the myometrial and endometrial junction, the contractibility of the uterus is altered and it may push the embryo outside, again resulting in implantation failure. Even once the embryo is implanted, what we have seen is because the muscle mass is thicker in size, it loses its elasticity which has to happen during pregnancy. Normally a small size uterus becomes a very big uterus in pregnancy. But this elasticity is lost in adenomyosis. So there is more chances of having a second trimester abortions. So this is one of the effects of adenomyosis on pregnancy and similarly it can lead to preterm deliveries. So how do we treat it and how do we overcome infertility in such couples? So whenever there is a big myometrium, what we actually do is we decrease the size of this musculature by giving three to four months of treatment either with GnRH agonist or few oral medications. Once the volume of the uterus comes down, then we plan for embryo transfer.